Hi everyone, this tutorial is about manipulating uh, still images uh, on Weave Video. It's uh, made out of a request that came up recently. Uh, here I'm in the video editor. Here's my media, so here are images I've uploaded, but I can go over to just images here. This is just a huge bank. You know, I could just look for images about space. Uh, this could be helpful to look at kind of B-roll images although they can feel kind of like stock and, and disconnected and not really authentic at the same time. So don't use them just because they're here, but uh, certainly check them out and see if they make sense. So anytime you have an image, whether it's in your media or here, you can, just, you can click on it and it kind of previews over here just so you see a little bit larger. But if you like it, you click it and, and drag it down. I'm just going to drag a bunch down here. Um, here we go. And I think it defaults, so it's like five seconds per image. And if you see if you might be able to see if I hover over this, it says five seconds. Um, pops right up there. You can always de decide on how long an image is on screen by kind of grabbing the end and, and tracking it this way or that way. Um, Here's a couple things you can do. If you have, sometimes people like photo montages and you can just grab a whole bunch of uh, images in a row, select all like that. Um, so to do that, I'm clicking off, I'm dragging through, and then I'm unclicking uh, or letting go. Now they're all selected. If I right click or two finger click, um, Uh, I should get this adjust duration. So that's going to adjust the duration of all of these. So maybe I don't want them on the screen for five seconds, maybe two and a half. Um, actually, three seconds. It's kind of a minimum to apply what's called a, the Ken Burns effect. Ken Burns is a, a famous uh, filmmaker who made this um, effect famous, which is just like having photos slowly move on screen. I'm going to click that so you can see what it looks like. And uh, I'm just going to play this so you can see. So you can see as it moves through these images, the images aren't still on screen. They're almost still, but they're moving slightly or zooming in or out or left to right, panning. Um, and it just makes the what you're seeing much more engaging. Um, you can always go back to adjust duration and you know maybe make it down to two seconds instead. And so they move a little bit quicker, right? You're gonna have to figure out what's right for your film. I wouldn't go much shorter than two seconds, and and even this one has it's like too much uh, movement in just two seconds. So what I'm gonna do is just double click this one and get in here. Um, I'm gonna go to the animation part. And it talks about where it's going to start and end. And I just think it it moves too much. So if it's going to start here, I'm going to have it end here. So the difference between here and start and end is a lot smaller. So if the difference is smaller and it's playing over the same amount of time, then it'll just move, it'll look like it moves a little slower. So. Yeah, it looks a little bit better. It was super quick before. Uh, but that's one thing you can do. And it is important that you know that uh, whether you group them all together and then do it afterwards or you just have a single image like this and you want to do some edits on it, you can double click that image and then you get all these different things here. Um, so I can scale. So that's just like kind of zooming in and zooming out. 1.0 here will be like uh, original. Um, if I want to fit it, uh, there was a question about all this black uh, edges. If I want to fit it though, uh, across the screen, I can hit fit. Maybe that's not going to work, or fill, I guess. And I'll just pull the image. Obviously, you're going to lose stuff above and below, and that's going to work for some images and not all. Um, but that can be helpful. Um, here's another way you can kind of fill the edges. So you can keep it like this, but add blurred background. So I'm going to click this. You can see when I click it, it's just blurring 
it's taking really some of the image and like blurring it in the background of the, the main image. It helps keep the original image there in full in proportion and then just put some other stuff on on the screen so it's not wholly black on screen. Um, I can flip the image around. I can rotate the image. Uh, there's not, unfortunately, there's not like a great way to rotate it just a little bit. Position is more about like positioning it on screen like this. You can see the position, the X, Y coordinates changing when I do that. Um, so I can do it by either clicking the image and dragging it around or actually changing the coordinates over here. Animation is just like you want the, the image to move on screen. So if I wanted to zoom in, I would start here. But by the end of the image on screen, I would want the image to be bigger right? or zoomed in. And if I want to see what that's going to look like, I can hit play here. And that's just zooming in, right? And that's just the difference between the starting position and the end position, given the amount of time I have that image on, on screen. Keying is more about taking a color out. This would be important if you're creating a, a green screen effect, which I'm not going to get into at this point in this video. And this is just a general color. So you can adjust the brightness a little bit, the contrast hues, color, tint, temperature. Um, helpful just to hit reset and get these all back to zero. If you move things around, don't like them. One important thing about this is if you do some color keying for an interview and you color key one clip and you have a clip of that same individual later on, uh, you're going to want to color key exactly the same. So what I usually do is write down these numbers. So it might be brightness 21, hue, minus 24, tint, minus 1, whatever it is. So if I have several, if I have five clips in my film of the same video, basically, I'm just going to want to go to each of those clips and be very clear and purposeful that I, I set the color uh, exactly as I want. And then I go to the other four clips and adjust them really exactly the same. And I would do the same um, often with, uh, let's see. Uh, I do the same with some other things. Uh, I guess I, I, I don't have that right here. So I hit save changes here. And it save changes on this particular um, photo. Again, I can play it in here. Um, I guess the other thing I'll show you is if you want multiple images on screen at the same time, it just means you need more than one video track. So I'm going to add a video track here. So I added a video track and now because I'm going to show you how to put more than one image on the screen at the same time, um, we're going to have to double this up. So what that essentially means is well, it's popping up at this moment in the video, there's two things happening, two visuals, right? And I could almost have infinity, like I could do three, four, a hundred. Um, but this one's really covering up the one underneath. So I don't even get to see the one underneath. So if I really want to see both of them, I could um, get into this and like make one smaller um, on the screen. This is kind of a silly example, but I'm just trying to uh, layer them in here in a way where you can see kind of multiple things on screen at the same time, right? And so during these couple seconds, even though this looks silly, I've got two images on screen, they're both moving there's different effects, essentially. So they're moving in slightly different directions at different speeds. Um, but uh, hopefully that's helpful. Um, if you want images side by side, you'd, you'd really do the same thing. Um, you'd get two images on the screen at the same time. And then you just have to go in and adjust each one. So make this one a bit smaller. And I want this, you know, up here. 
save and I'm going to go to this one. Uh, make it a bit smaller as well. And then, you know, move down here. They can overlap, whatever. Um, what's interesting to note is the one that appears to be on top, which is the one on the top left here, right? Covers over the other one. The one that's on top visually is the one that's always on top in the editor. So you can think about that as layers. So if you put something on top of this, right? I'm going to make another video track. If I take this image and put it on top of these, I'm just going to cover over what's there. Unless, of course, I click into it. I change the size of it. And, you know, maybe it's location. So there I have three images all on screen at the same time, all on screen for the same amount of time. Uh, all of these are not moving or animated, so they really just stay there. All right, a couple other things you could do with this one image is uh, fade it in and out. Um, you could double click on it and hit fade. Uh, it'll say, you know, one second, one second. So good default. You can see what that looks like. That's just fading this one image. You'll see the difference with the other. Yeah, right. The one on the bottom left will fade out too. Right, the other ones don't. So if I want all three of them. I've just got to do that for all three. So click fade one, one second. I could change that if I want. And then fade, save changes. And now this look will all kind of fade in together and kind of all fade out together. It might look pretty cool too if the, each of those moved a little bit, like zoomed in or zoomed out, like I showed you previously. Um, these filters, I think, are pretty new. So you can click on an image and hit filter. And it's going to, you know, we're used to seeing these in different ways, you know, social media, even on our phones in different ways. But it just changes the colors a little bit. Um, and the bleached out look. So I can do that. You can see how it did. You know, change this image. I don't like what it did, but anyway, I can show you that there's some filters there. It's really just the same as adjusting all those, you know, the brightness, the contrast, the color, the tint, it just, you know, is a preset organization of those uh, in one filter. All right. Those are some things, uh, probably certainly not all, but hopefully they get you a little bit more started and grounded in how to manipulate still images in WeVideo. Reach out with any questions. Thanks.